guys, and welcome to another episode of Comic Realm with Tiffany. And I have a special guest. Patrick. Where are you oh, from? Wait, Patrick? am I supposed to say, this is Patrick. This is Patrick. <laughs> and so today we are at Unsung Brewery at, for our St. Patty's Day, enjoying That's our right. beer. My day. Right? So stay tuned as we break into some Wait, is that, is that why I'm the special guest? Because yes. it's nice. St. Patty's Day. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> No, but stay tuned as we go into some comic book news and also some reviews. And then it's going to go re- intro. All right. So first up on the news, shall we talk about the Avengers Endgame yes, trailer? Yes, definitely. What did you think about, about it? I loved it, but I didn't do the thing I normally do. I didn't watch it more than once. It was, it was awesome, but I was also like, I don't want to be anything spoiled for me. Because it's the last. Around. Yeah. So, like, for Infinity War, I picked apart everything, and I watched the trailer over and over. And this time I was like, that was very cool, but the less I know, the better. And I did look at, like, one site that was, like, breaking down all these images from it, and I got, like, maybe three or four, and I'm like, nope, I'm going to stop. Because <laughs> it talked about, like, it showed showed Tony walking with them when they're getting on the ship, and I did like didn't even well because first of all I watched the trailer when I was at work so I was yeah. like also watching to make sure no one saw me watching so I was only <laughs> half watching and then when I saw the picture of Tony I'm like I didn't even catch that the first time and that's when it occurred to me I'm like I don't think I want to be spoiled I'm already right? so excited for this movie that like kind of doesn't matter it's not like they need to convince me to go see it opening night they don't really have to convince anybody to yeah. go see it opening night because this is the last of the run for the Avengers yeah and I mean I thought well I thought I couldn't be any more excited than I already am until I saw Captain Marvel and saw the end credit scene, and I was like, oh my god. Where's Fury? I need to see this so badly. So I was like, okay. So after that, I'm like, trailer, no trailer, whatever. Like, the trailer was great, but... I thought they were going to give us a trailer at the Captain Marvel movie. That's I was like, I, I was hoping my, at I first. arrived and then, early, And too. then I, the more I thought about it, I was like... They probably won't give us a trailer because there will be a credit scene that ties in. So why, you know? That's true. So, although you know the trailer really didn't show her, so they could have. They could have totally shown mm-hmm. other things and then put that end credit scene where you see her with them. Either way, it worked. Yeah, but they showed her towards the end when she's talking to Thor. Or oh, that, oh, that's right. That little like, standoff like yeah, kind of. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, they could. They should have done a trailer without her in it at all, just for just for Captain Marvel. Yeah. And then done the post credit scene where you see her join them. That would have been perfect bookends, but whatever. Either way, I'm still Either going. Way, Doesn't still matter. That credit they was got my so money. Amazing. Um, I need to go. Pick go get up your food. My I'll just food. spam, and you can cut okay. all this out. <laughs> so what's up? I'd like to talk to you all about the Great Pumpkin. Each year, the Great Pumpkin chooses one pumpkin patch that he feels is the most sincere. And on Halloween, he rises from the pumpkin patch and gives toys and candy to all the boys and girls that believe in the Great Pumpkin. This year, I'm pretty sure he's going to pick Anaheim because it's the greatest city in the world. Plus, I'll be there, and I'm a believer. That's all I got. This beer is good. It's called the... uh, Saint Knickerdoodle. Oh, she's back. <laughs> Are you talking shit about me, Patrick? No. You'll have, to, you'll have to wait until you review it, and you'll find out what I talked about. All right. Well, oh, shit, you don't eat That's okay. Meat. Okay. <laughs> I haven't had breakfast, so this is my breakfast. This pork, pulled pork, fries, everything galore. So <laughs> Do that place sells out of their meat All every the time. day, and then they close. Like, well, we kind that of come at job. the end of the True, night. but still, like, it must be a good job to have, like, oh, we're out of food, we can just go home. You know what I mean? Like, to always sell out. True. I mean, that's good business right there. Yeah. You know you're doing something right. But anyways, uh, what were you talking about? The Great Pumpkin. Huh? The Great Pumpkin. The Great Pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> so back to Avengers. <laughs> Um, so, like, since the trailer, I only just watched it twice, because I'm just too excited for it to come in the end of April, right? April 25th. 25th, yeah. Like, it opens the 26th, but let's be honest, yeah. we're all going Thursday night on the 25th. Yeah. First showing that, I, whatever the first showing is, that's the one I'll go to. Yeah, that's, 
that's when it comes out to me. Exactly. But um, when I was looking through it, um, what did you think of their new uniforms? I like them for for this film and like what they're going up against. I wouldn't mm -hmm. like it if like, oh look, this is the new uniforms that everyone's gonna wear all the time. It just it kind of just really makes them look like a team. Right. It know? looks like more of like unity. They're coming yeah. together as one. It, it kind of reminded me of the first X-Men movie at the end where they all had the black suits on. <laughs> right. With their little striped little covers little, or yeah. like colors that they had to yeah. show that they're different. But. Yeah. But it, it made me think of that. But at least because that was a time when every comic book movie like we can't use the actual source material costume. Everyone has to wear black leather. So it's kind of funny that it's white, you know, like yeah, white armor. Yeah, it's it looks white, cool. red. It looks cool, and I think it'll um, just, you know, it just gives it a very different look. And I feel like there's definitely going to be different time periods to this, so mm -hmm. that you'll know that that, and who knows if it, it will jump around in time or if it will still be linear, but... It has to, because the end credit for Captain Marvel, you have a Black Widow with, with a short, short hair. blonde hair. Right. But in this trailer, you yeah, see her, like, the, the red hair is yeah. coming back as long. So, so it's like... And it is kind of cool that they're all going to have to suit up at the end for right? the, fun, the final battle. So obviously, Tony, Tony Stark does not die in, in space because he's in the team with the suit as yeah. well. Or it could be... Because you know how they did with the last Avengers movie where they're all running? We never see that scene That's true. and they're not together. That's true. So that could be just like a whatever scene. They're just trying to throw us off. That would right? be so mad. Because I've heard in, um, there's rumors going around the internet that the scenes that they gave us for this new trailer, they're not going to be all at the all stuff in the they movie. they cut out, they're like, just give them this. <laughs> I well, mean, that could happen. Because they could. gave us, a, they do that with their, a lot of their trailers. They put scenes in there that we don't see in the actual Because well, a lot of times the company that makes the trailer isn't isn't the filmmakers. It's like they, they farm out a bunch of footage to... Um, to like a marketing company or a marketing team that doesn't know what the final movie is going to look like and they pick and choose. Because you remember with when Star Wars Rogue One came out yeah. and the trailer was completely different from the movie? Yeah. Apparently like even the director told them like, hey, a lot of the stuff you picked for the trailer didn't make the movie. And they're like, oh, that's okay. But then that's kind of good for them <laughs> because like it doesn't spoil Surprises, anything. Because yeah. there's that one scene where she was like walking on like the catwalk up really high and the TIE fighter just like flies up in front of yeah. her. And I was waiting for that and it never happened. I'm like, oh, what happened? Oh, yeah. But uh, I mean, I think at the very least, the suits will make it into the film because the action figures have leaked mm -hmm. and they have the, they're making the figures in those suits so like that's gotta be thank you new york toy comic right <laughs> toy convention <laughs> and then uh i think another scene didn't leak but the description did that i think the disney shareholders got to see and it wasn't in the trailer when they're like in the ship and i forget who says that i don't know if it rocket says it or somebody says like who's who like whose first time in space is this and they all like a bunch of them raise their hand so that was in the trailer that was i don't think that was in the trailer <laughs> But it, it was shown to the Disney shareholders, so oh, and they're all okay. in those suits in that one too. Like they're on the How ship. How do you know about that one? Where'd you hear? Do you uh, have a friend? People that saw it. No, people <laughs> that got to go to this. Like there was some press there, and mm. they got to see a few minutes of the movie. And that this guy walked out and tweeted it, and he wrote like, "Here's what I saw. They're all on the ship. Someone says, whose first time in space is this?'" And then he lists like, I guess probably Black Widow. Yeah, she. W it would be her first time. Uh -huh. Would be a uh, Nighthawk or. Uh, Hawkeye? Ha yeah, Hawkeye. Um, Night Hawk. Hawkeye. And then, well, now his name is changing into uh, Ronan. Ronan. Yeah, and I think like one other person that raises their hand because they'd never been. Well, Cap, Cap never went out in space either. Yeah, he hasn't yeah. been in space. Everybody else, I think, has. And so they like they raise their hands, and then that that's and then the guy wrote like he tweeted like that's all I remember. I'm like, what do you mean that's all? <laughs> that's I remember? all you remember? Oh my God! If I was in there, I would remember everything. Maybe you can't like, really say too yeah, much, you know? Because sure they all have to sign a contract. Yeah. Um. Have you, like, remember that contract when uh, Kevin Smith was talking about it? When they did a movie, they signed a contract, but they signed it. He signed it. Uh, Sandra, Bullock, Sandra Bullock, him, and Ben Affleck. Because yeah. he would say, like, did you actually sign your name? He's like, yeah. yeah. And, and he's he like, no. Back, they're he's like, like uh, sign your name here, Ms. Bullock. <laughs> yeah. Because Ben Affleck told Kevin Smith, you never you sign your never real sign name. Your name. <laughs> he's like, what are you signing? I was like, oh, we signed it, Sandra Bullock. That's awesome. I have to remember that. <laughs> Because I, I got in to see an advanced screening of Guardians 2 mm -hmm. 
I don't remember how to sign anything or if it was. I must. I must have had to. Well, it's like in. every like you know. Whenever we go to like comic convention, little event, they always have us sign yeah. something, and we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah get us yeah. in because we just want drinks. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> Wait, if I sign this, you'll give me free beer? Okay. Okay. I'm in. I'll give you my soul. There you go. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Marvel does have the m- the money, and they don't. They're not gonna really make any loss. To like if they even put fake scenes for this trailer yeah, because yeah. they've done such a great job with these movies still, so it's like I do not want to be so spoiled and like see scenes that are like oh my god yeah. it's gonna blow my mind yeah you know? yeah and I mean the purpose of a trailer is just to get you excited about the movie that's why yeah. I kind of sometimes I don't care unless they show something in the trailer that is contrary to what actually happens mm-hmm. if it's just like a scene that got cut out no big deal or if it's a scene that was filmed specifically for a trailer to show you like. You know what it's like? It's like in comic books, the cover. Half the time the cover doesn't actually happen in the issue. It's it to give you really a feel <laughs> of like what's going to happen. Yeah. You know? But when I was a kid, I didn't get that. I would buy it. I'm like, oh my God, this is going to happen. And then you read it. And yeah, like, it's that like never nothing happened. happened. It wasn't until I was older. I'm like, oh, okay, this is just supposed to kind of communicate. Right. Like the theme of what's going to happen in this issue. But you're not actually going to see this. Right. And then you learn that like, oh, there's different... Um, artwork for like yeah. there's different variants for this same issue and then you're like oh okay yeah <laughs> you catch on really late as a kid with these uh these comic books especially with the covers you well, just like, look at it and you're like oh that's you look cool. at the cover and it's like batman dies in this issue you're and then like, you read what? it batman didn't die yeah. it's like oh well, he almost just supposed died to communicate that he oh, yeah <laughs> like he got <laughs> he ricocheted might. by a bullet yeah. and that's it <laughs> He came close to death, but just ricocheted. <laughs> I think I saw one the other day, and like the cover said, like, who is killing Superman? I'm like, well, no one. <laughs> <laughs> no one. Unless you're, like, kryptonite. Yeah. <laughs> like, like Doomsday, but that already happened. <laughs> right? <laughs> but don't worry. Just send him off to the sun. He'll, he'll come right. back. <laughs> but um, do you think there's any, like, new, other than Captain Marvel coming into this uh last movie do you think there's going to be other characters i think we will see because from what i'm hearing is you'll see ant-man's daughter grown up so i think they're actually going to go forward in time too but i think that's probably it unless there's they want to introduce other like there's hot guy's Avengers. daughter who knows if they're gonna i don't oh, know right, if he lost right, her or right. like yeah because we don't know what happened to his family yeah. in the snap because it looks like he was showing her the ropes of using a bow so it's yeah like, so I think, like, aside from seeing, like, the next generation of heroes uh, in a few years into the future, then I don't think we'll yeah. see any other, like, new current heroes that they'll turn around and use. Because I think they'll... And then um, with Captain Marvel... Because Cap- I feel like we would have, like, it would have leaked. You know, like, they're pretty good about the plot, but... But they're very good cast, at coming out with, like, random new people. Yeah. Like, I didn't know, like, with the first Guardians of the Galaxy, I didn't know, like really like the collector oh yeah yeah that you know? was a surprise i think i knew he was gonna be in it then, but, but I like didn't i didn't know what was he gonna be doing and if it's a, if it is a, like if it's something cgi then it's easy for them to keep it a secret because there's no actor attached that will accidentally blab because i didn't yeah. expect howard the duck <laughs> right when i saw I that i wish they i hope they well they're gonna bring in something they're gonna kevin smith kevin is doing smith. a howard the duck animated for Hulu? Yeah. But I think that I get the feeling the animated ones might be their own universe and not be MCU. Well, yeah, it is because it's going to be more adult. But, it's more but that adult gives animation. me hope that down the line, Hulu can bring over the Netflix shows because it looks like Disney is okay with putting their adult content on Hulu since they own a stake in it. But, but they can't use those characters for two years that was part of the Netflix deal. Like, when it gets canceled, they're locked down for two years. Mm. And so Disney keeps saying, like, nope, we're done. Like, I think because with Defenders Netflix... Defenders and all that stuff is over. Yeah. But I think in two years, because Hulu's already said they're open to... They would be open to bringing it over. I bet you in two years they bring it back. Because they were popular. Like, even at the time of canceling, it did really well for Netflix. Mm-hmm. So I, was I, upset I don't that think we've were... seen the last of those shows. No, they can't. Like... There's too much of a big following, and to just like cut them, just like just like that, how they. And did. I bet you part of the deal is like they not only can't use them for two years, they probably aren't allowed to go like, oh, we're taking on Netflix, but in two years we'll put them on Hulu. They're probably not allowed to say that, you know. Well, yeah, because they're probably setting up. They probably set up a new contract 
where yeah. they have more control with Hulu, not like how they had with Netflix. Because they can't put them on the Disney Plus streaming service yeah. because it's going to be family oriented, and they can't. Because Netflix probably had contracts with Fox, yeah, and then like also with Disney. So like, they're, that's I think that's why they're stopping it with Netflix, and that's why they're going to Hulu because there's a new contract with well, them probably. I think a lot of it, like. They wouldn't want to put stuff on Netflix anymore when they're going to have their own streaming service. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to get to the point that we're going to have to start picking and choosing. Like right now, I subscribe to Netflix, Hulu, HBO Now, and I think I, have, I, think I still have CBS All Access because I wanted to watch Star Trek. So I already have four, <laughs> right? So you figure at some point, you're gonna, people, you have to start making decisions. Like, what am I going to cut? And... Disney's not going to leave their stuff on Netflix when they want to bring you over to Hulu or to yeah. Disney Plus. But I can see how they would be like, well, we own part of Hulu, so we don't care if people get both because we still make money. And that way, they can put all their adult content on Hulu without having to worry about little kids watching. That's that. true because I was thinking, like, how is that Disney stream going to happen? Because I know that they're having, like, a teen-like segment, but that yeah. you could only do so much yeah. with that kind of rating. remember, like, the first season of Jessica Jones like mm -hmm. the, there's like all those explicit sex scenes and stuff like that's not going to go on Disney Plus there's no way they're going to put that on Disney Plus so mm -mm. those Marvel shows or those um, Marvel Netflix shows I don't think will ever make it onto Disney Plus period because a lot of people were like oh they canceled them on Netflix because they want to put them on Disney Plus I'm like I don't think they do I don't think they want to deal with like having parental settings they just want to be like hey this is Disney your kids can watch this and you don't have to worry about it and then they'll make put all the other stuff on Hulu and it could still be I think they would have to because yeah because I think it will still be connected to the MCU but but the same way that the Marvel ones are like they take place but they don't cross over mm -hmm. so they're in the universe but it doesn't matter if you watch them or not if you only like want... the gifted legion yeah, and then stuff. the runaways but they all... were saying the shows they want to bring to Marvel plus like the Loki show and and the uh, um the other one is like a, I think a Sam and Bucky TV show like there's just, like yeah. s they're gonna really they're coming out with a bunch of e like and, oh in, Scarlet Witch yeah, and um, all that Vision. Stuff. Like which I'm those excited. <laughs> are gonna feel like you're you have to see them to keep up with the movies, whereas you didn't have to watch the Daredevil stuff to know what's what was going happening. on in MCU. Yeah, and then like also Shield. Yeah, but Shield is more of like the cable. Shield was like. Shield was well, like you don't need to watch Agents of Shield to know what's going on in the movies. But it doesn't hurt to be watching the movies to know what was going on in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Because yeah. they would have those episodes like after the second Thor movie when they were doing the cleanup. Yeah. You know, that They're kind pretty of stuff. much like S.H.I.E.L.D. What they use for that show is pretty much, okay, this is happening. But this is also happening. Since they're up, Avengers are out mm -hmm. there fighting all the crime up in space or whatever. We're or a different here country. We're here. Corner, yeah. Right? yeah. We're fighting whatever the local, you know, not so superior villains. <laughs> right, <much>. right. <laughs> Yeah, but, I kind of fell off that show, but I want to get back into it now. That I think, I don't know if it's ending, but I know they're doing a shorter season this year. And I keep reading stuff that I wish I didn't know about how the last <laughs> season ended. I'm like, ah, I should have just kept watching. Like, can't I can't keep up with everything. I too much keep TV. Up. There's, there's, there's just, just too, too much, much to watch. watch. Yeah, I'm still behind on, I'm only like a third of the way through the last Daredevil. And I, I still missed, have to watch Punisher. I still haven't gotten up to I haven't Punisher. watched Punisher. I missed the last season of Luke Cage. And I know that the last Jess the last Jessica Jones is coming out, so like I wanna like when that ends, I wanna be caught up on everything just to see how they leave that corner of the universe. And just what's be with the up. new Yeah. What's gonna happen in the yeah. future since they're all cut. Yeah. I just finished binge watching The Gifted. See, I haven't even started that. It's I'm so, so good. Behind. It's so yeah. good. There's just too much TV. It's just too There's much There's too TV. much to watch. <laughs> Way too much to watch. Just for like, it's funny because you know how like growing up, there's nothing on TV, and then you have all these apps with you remember different. Remember the days stuff? when we would watch the same shows over and over again, and well, because we had Saturday night, Saturday morning cartoons, and we only had three channels, mm -hmm. and we would watch. You'd watch the step episodes you've seen over and over again, and now I don't. But then know you would the kick, last be kicked out of the watched. house to go play outside. Right. But I can't remember the last time for something new that I watched an episode of something that I'd already seen. Yeah. Because I want to. I'm like, oh, that was a good one. But I don't have time because there's a new one of, like, three other shows. Yeah, because, like, we have that option, like, to, okay, I'll just record it and watch it back later. But then you forget. And I have so much stuff. Like, I'm still have, I still have to catch up to Walking Dead. That's the only show I'm caught up on. Yeah. That's the one I'm not. But then I'm like, I oh, might I as well have back. it recorded. I'm caught up on, I stay caught up on Walking Dead and most of the DC TV shows. Mm -hmm. And that's just because with Walking Dead, it gets spoiled. Like, you either, I think you either 
try to stay caught up or don't watch it anymore because like well because like they always leave you with so much like oh let's start over with a new story let's right. find let's check out this these new characters and it's like i want to push forward and see what the characters i've like started with since the beginning i want to see what's going on but it's like you know it's a, it's it's a huge world now it, it's yeah. not you know how they're bringing in a third show yeah, and they're bringing three and the, new movies, And the, too. the Rick Grimes movies, yeah. So they're really going to expand that universe. Yeah. Have you watched any of this year? I watched the first two episodes of this current okay. season. But, like, I was like, okay, I'm going to record and watch back to See, it. See, I really like, like it. Like, I know a lot of people have jumped off and have just gotten sick of it. But I feel like the time jump really freshened things up. I, and the fact that they're not telling a lot of what happened in between the time jump. Yeah. So it does feel like... I jumped off after, like... It was kind of towards after Glenn died, and then I went back when the whole battle oh, yeah. happened, and then I jumped off again because I'm like, all right, it's starting all over. And it's like, ugh, I couldn't. it's kind of a good place to yeah. start start from with the time jump because mm -hmm. it doesn't doesn't matter how much you know about what yeah, you missed. Yeah, because I'm gonna restart with the time jump because yeah, like it's that's a good place to start. Yeah, and then it's like there's rumors that Rick. Grimes is not really dead because they don't really show no, him dead. No, because in his movies, it, it's going to be what happened to him after. Yeah. And I think I think the only thing that will make sense is... But the Michonne's going to be in them too, they said. So it's just like a lot of shit that's happening. Well, I, I feel like the only way it would make any sense to me is if he doesn't remember. Because <laughs> if he wakes up somewhere and then he's like, all right, I'll just start a new life here. That would make sense if it weren't for the fact that he has a kid that he left behind in Alexandria. Yeah, he so, would like, have to have, like, go, a memory he loss. He would, like, you know... Because he and would know where he was, like, going. even if, the like, the point of the three movies was how do I get back to Alexandria to get Judith, well, then they'd have to bring him back to the show when those are over. So that's why I think this that at some point he either has to have memory loss or maybe, um, I forget her name, the girl that got him out of there tells him that, convinces him that Judith is dead. So then he just moves forward like on a new oh like, you know, like that new place adventure. is like, gone no that's reason. it yeah there'd yeah. be no reason to go back that's the only thing that makes sense to me but we'll see what they do who I'm knows like, they must have some kind of plan because when he decided to leave they could have killed him off but they chose not to so they must have something that they feel like they can yeah because everyone's all like oh he's dead and then i hear like no he's not dead because they never really show him die yeah so and they, and they kept saying like rick grimes final episode because the other ones won't be episodes they'll be tv yeah. movies so yeah this should yeah be, they always i'm do excited that. for it I, like i said I, I know people keep telling me like oh i gave up on that show i dropped off I'm like, i still find it it was just hard like after like I think it was hard for people because after Glenn died and everyone had to, like, the way they, like, after that, they made that show after is, like, they tried to start over. And then you have all these fans who's been, like, watching it for so long. They're like, I don't want to start over. I want to keep going with the, the original cast that are yeah. still there. But they try to, like, bring new characters. I mean, I understand they have to bring new characters because everyone pretty much dies yeah, in that I world. Mean but we're, and we're like, not used to this. There's yeah. been so few shows where there's the stakes are so high that main characters die yeah. all the time. But then they made some episodes. It's like, was that episode really necessary? You know? Yeah. But yeah. who knows? Well, I think it's one of those things where they go, we have a starting point, and we know where we want to get. And it would take us about six episodes to get there. But the network demands that we do 20 or whatever, you know? Yeah. So now we've got to fill time. Well, because that's their, like, and only number one show in the AMC. Yeah, so. exactly. But it'd be so much better if they didn't fill time. Like, that's where, um, why I think a lot of people fell off Lost. Because it always, like, every season <laughs> had a good starting point and ending point. And then during Sweeps Week, they always have some really good episodes. But the rest, let's just fill time till we get to, you know, and that's kind of with everything. Like, even back when I was young and I watched X-Files every Sunday night, like, and then they were just random like yeah, episodes. You're starting episode and your ending episode, and then like you'd have the sweeps week where you have a two-parter that totally ties in the story, and then every other week was like monster of the week, and a lot of those were good, but a lot of them were just not memorable. Like yeah, you know, like or a lot of them were just later. fucking weird. Yeah, just weird. And then when they came back a couple years ago, and they were like, "Oh, this season's only gonna be six episodes," I was like, "Oh, cool, they're only gonna do." six episodes that have to do with the main story and they weren't they did one and then one at the end and then filler in the middle i'm like okay man <laughs> <laughs> but they got people watching it yeah they got people back in no i mean you had to watch it it was like the exiles all over again it's like cool which one of the episodes one of the filler ones like monster of the week mm -hmm. the one with uh 
Reese Darby from Flight of the Concords. Mm -hmm. That was so good when he was the the wear man. <laughs> the wear man. Oh god. But yeah, so I mean, that's where I'm at with Walking Dead. Like I'm still hooked. I did, I did. Uh, I fell off of Fear of the Walking Dead, but not on purpose. It's just because it wasn't on Hulu anymore. I think like the new. I couldn't episodes. get into Fear of the Walking Dead. I, it took me a while to get into it, and then by the time I finally did, then, then I, I missed an entire half season of it. Mm -hmm. and I was like, like the so. one thing I loved about what they pointed out, and I think it was the first or second episode, but it was like this like chubby kid, like nerd kid. He's like, they're zombies. I'm like, finally, someone <laughs> fucking said, the said word. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're not walkers. They're just or zombies. fighters or geeks. Yeah. Uh, they've call, um, What was the other? They've called them so many things, but they've never said zombies. Yeah. Yeah. But I was like, oh my god, and then he dies. So I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. he wouldn't know what to do. He would have saved the planet. <laughs> but no. I made um, it. I made it halfway through the fourth season, and then a lot of the cast changed. And that was. I was. I was. The same, it was like what you were saying about Walking Dead, but for me, it was like that with Fear of Walking Dead. They changed the cast so much. I was like, I was a little upset. I was. Like, I don't want to say anything. It was too hard to start it over for me. Like I started over when like Rick Grimes woke up right. to that world, and then like them like yeah the first invasion when it started, but I was like, now we can start. We have to start back to square one for them to figure it out when now already know what's like everyone knows what's going on you know right it was just too hard it's a lot to keep up with. so yeah. many characters especially now that they have all the different towns that you have to know who lives where but yeah and it's I mean, like it's who's that hard, guy it's so many hard names enough keeping up with all the people in game of thrones but <laughs> <laughs> oh Walking my it was god easier when it was like here game there's 10 people thrones. in my room and you only need to know these 10 people you keep up with game of thrones yes okay did Sometimes you see the I new don't... trailer uh yes Yes. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm like, what's happening with Arya? Yeah. Why is she running? She never oh. runs scared. Yeah. I can't wait. I'm so excited. <sighs> I mean. My plan is like, obviously watch the new season and as soon as it ends, start the show over and want, try to binge it as quickly as possible so that stuff stays it's fresh It's a lot mind, but to binge. No one, yeah, it really is. My, it took my mom, I think, she finally caught up to me for the last season before it started. And it took her two weeks. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. And then when I because they're like in, like almost an hour. Because the thing is, is like I want to read the books, and I've started the book. It's so much detail. But it's, it's so much detail, and then and then I don't want to be with those people that are like I didn't like this episode because it's different than the book. Mm -hmm. I want to just treat them as two separate things. So my plan was when the show's over, I'll read the books. But then I was like, no, actually when the show's over, I want to watch the show again, start to finish, well, but quickly, because there's a lot of stuff I forgot. Yeah, even like, since this last season's coming out, the last book is not even finished. No, I know. So, so I think I think I don't I don't want to start the books until they at least finish the whole announce thing. the release date for the book, the last book, and then I can like figure out, okay, well if I read like one a month or whatever it takes to get there, because I don't want to read all the books except the last one and then have to wait a year and forget everything. Yeah. So. You literally have to seclude yourself to read those books because I have one, the first book on Audible. Same. And I like tr I was like listening to in the car but then like one split second I was distracted for some little thing and then like they were saying something I'm like wait what are you talking about? Who are you talking about? Who is this person? And it's just like so many characters so many so names. So many people. And it's just like it's it's very detailed and you literally had to take a moment of your time to read the book like because fully. I tried to do it on audible too and that's usually how I listen to everything but I was like because there's so many characters I'm also almost better off doing it in a regular book so I can flip back and look stuff up yeah because I kept rewinding and I'm like oh I, I don't know who this and plus when I read the first book before I watched the show I started reading it and the whole first chapter is when those those the guys are out in the snow mm -hmm. so none of those characters <laughs> come back to so when i started the second chapter i'm like what the hell is all new people <laughs> <laughs> pretty much you know how they did like uh, an interview with uh, the director and yeah. he came out with the book with like nothing but little stickies on it yeah. he's like see all those little stickies those are all those people that freaking die i'm like oh my god yeah it was yeah. like covered it's it's uh I've been like telling. I've been talking to some people that have never seen it. Tell them like you should start watching right now, and you may not be caught up by the time the season starts, but you could be caught up by the time the season ends. You, know, yeah. you can roll right into the finale because if you're thinking about watching it, you don't want to. You don't want to hear how it ends. 
right? Even like that's tangentially, like, the worst. like someone goes like, "Oh, this person ended up getting the throne." Even not like pretty much I like how like, like Breaking Bad, this, yeah, where they exactly. announce it everywhere at the end. I'm like, "Well, I'm not gonna watch this last season." And so it's like <laughs> if you even if you don't watch the show, you probably heard like you know you might know who like Khaleesi is or Jon Snow. Like you've heard those names. So yeah. if they if they like announce the next day on the news like, "Oh, and then at the end, Jon Snow was on the throne." It's like. Well, what was the point of? Why would you, it would be yeah. so hard to watch it from the beginning when you think that he's like a nothing character? Mm-hmm. And so, my thing is like telling people like, look, start it right now, and for the first few seasons, you won't be able to understand what's going on. There's too many characters. Don't worry, because by the end, there won't be as many characters. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you think is gonna end up on the throne? Oh, I don't know. Because they really are, they really have developed it in ways that like there's a number of people that it could be. Mm-hmm. Like, they've done so much with John's character, and, like... But but at the same time, there's all this stuff going on with with um, with his sister that it could end up being her because she started as, like, oh, I just want to be a queen, and, you know, and then all of a sudden now she's a strong character. And then, like, if you're a fan of Khaleesi, it's like, well, that's who you want to get it, but it almost seems too obvious. Yeah, and, and then, like, then if she ends up who right. you don't even know like well she's not going to show up in battle for the right. White Walkers so it's like she's just waiting for everyone to do it to kill and each they other die. Yeah. yeah she will let them all kill each other and then fight whoever's left over so that's yeah, a tough one like, and then you have Jon Snow and Khaleesi who may Khaleesi may be pregnant right you know so yeah so I almost wonder if something happens to them and somehow like their child gets thrown I don't know yeah, that's Cause, what I'm cause thinking, I feel like, like there, there has to be... It's hard, because you watch the show, and when things happen, you have to go, like, well, clearly they did that for a reason. They're yeah. going somewhere. But also, their reason might be just to throw us off with this show. Like, a lot plus, of the things they do don't go anywhere. They were just to make you think it was going to go somewhere. Yeah, and, and then plus, when they do any, like, kind of traveling, they fast-forward it, yeah. and, like, things There's are different. Cause, because, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, for how long for them to travel to one area to another, or, like... That's pretty much how they kind of begin with the seasons. Like it's, it's taken like a period of time for them to where get they everyone left. to get lined up yeah. on the like the giant chessboard of like okay these people are here 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 and here and we're just gonna move things around to the end and then we'll take a time jump. Again. Yeah. But yeah. So it's, it's uh, like it's it's one of those things where a lot of, like a lot of other shows or even movies you can kind of like you can logic out where they're going with it but I don't trust the show at all to go because well, based on what they've twist. shown us yeah I don't. I think that they've left for this last season. They've left enough people that could take the throne that it could. It's. Yeah. It's not. You know, it's not going to be what you expect because that's just not how the show works. But then when you try to figure out, well, then what am I not expecting? Well, then maybe they're like, kind of like, double screwing with you. So you go like, well, clearly it's not going to be this person. But then it was. You know? Yeah. Because so. then like also like you know how his uncle saved Jon Snow at the end. Yeah. But like he's already like you know halfway dead. But then it's like, how are they going to kill him where he's already like partial like. White Walker. He's right. gonna be a White Walker again, but is it when he comes back? He's not gonna know oh, it. Like man. his his memory's not gonna be there, so right. he's just gonna be another monster, you know? The, they like showed... is he the one gonna be killing Jon Snow? I feel like because they have that weird battle between yeah. them. I did you see all the 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 um, posters they put out that were like all the different people sitting on the throne? Mm-hmm. So you have like Khaleesi on the throne and Cersei and Jon. But the I best feel like one, none of them are gonna. Be. No, the best one was they had. Uh, Sam Tarly on oh, the throne. Yeah. I'm like, come on, that would be the best ending right? ever. The underdog. The one person you never expected. That's the funniest one of all. Like, True, because he's partially also like royal. In some but way. but it would be so funny if that was the ending. Like, oh, this guy. You didn't expect this guy. He's the only person left when everybody's dead at the end. He's like, he just walks up, takes the throne, credits. Yeah. <laughs> but then there's that also that was it the other son, the bastard child as uh-huh. well. Yeah, they didn't put him on. They didn't put him on the throne, but he's still alive. He's still out there. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many. There's so many. O- so many options. And then, since the book's not done, the show's probably going to end totally different than the book. And that's why I want to read that to be like, okay, so where does this one end? Which I think that's what will make it fun is reading the book, knowing that it might have a totally different ending than the show. Yeah. And that's why I, I want to. But then it's good that the book is not out because no one knows. No one what's can look it up and go, yeah. okay, this is clearly what's gonna happen, yeah. And then you'll have that thing where like, oh, you won't get those people like, oh, it wasn't like the book. Exactly. You know? Exactly. 
because he's there on set, so it's not like he's 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 throwing his opinions on there. You yeah, know, so. but in the end, they can do whatever they want because yeah. he took his sweet time writing the book. Eh, what can you do? <laughs> he's like a multi-billionaire, so do he, like, he don't he care. Wants, yeah. He could still come out with book. He's he's probably gonna come out with more stories after did this. You, Who did knows? you hear how like uh, people asked him, "Do you have a plan in place in case you die before you finish your books?" And he got really offended. <laughs> did, oh yeah, <laughs> like, I heard about that. Did you need that. to have a plan? <laughs> but then it's like how, that's kind of sucks when people like tell you that it's like everyone's just waiting for you to die. Like it's just well, like a weird like. Well, friend. it's almost like he's taken so long yeah. that that like you're like, uh, what are you you're doing? You're old, and he's like he's like doesn't look healthy. But then it's kind of hard, so it's like almost the like, pressure. And we're so invested in this. Yeah. Like, what if you do die before you finish it? Then what? We get, like... <laughs> well, it's kind of like, you know, you have your one-hit wonder, and then either that, your your record will gone platinum, but then it's like, how am I going to top that? Well, that I, It must that feel and, like yeah. that for him. Well, that and then he the was, pressure. like, writing short stories that take place before, and he was, like, writing episodes of the show. He was doing all this stuff that people were, like, people that are way into the books are like, dude... Finish the books and then go do all your other stuff. So, but he has to have his. Yeah. He has to say what's going to happen with these characters because he yeah. can't give Hollywood the whole free reign and just free go reign, do whatever you want. Then, like, what if, if the they, book is drastically different? That and then like you know Hollywood kind of fucks up stories anyway, so yeah. it's like you don't want him. I, to I'm do sure that. at some point he's he's told him the end point. Like you can get you can get to this point however you want, but you have to get to this point. You know, this mm-hmm. this is who this is how it should end. I would assume. He probably already told him, like, oh, this is how the book's going to end and stuff, but he still has, just has to write it. Because, like, even with, uh, you know, when, the, like, interviews I've read about how Harry, the Harry Potter movies were made, and they would work with J.K. on stuff, and, like, obviously, especially as the books got longer, we can't include every single detail in the book. And, but they would tell her, like, we need to cut this out. And she's like, oh, you can't cut that out because that's going to be important in, like, three books from now, and you're going to wish you had left it in the movie mm-hmm. kind of thing. So I hope they're at least doing that. They're going like, okay, we well, haven't written the book yet, but this is what we want to do. And if he goes, you can't do that because of X, Y, Z, then they listen. They don't just go, well, yeah. too bad. We're going to make the show that we're going to make. Because it is, it's it's weird to think there's still a book left and there's still a season left, but the season's going to be much shorter than it usually is. Yeah. So I feel like he must have just told him, here's the main things you have to hit. And the rest of his book, which is probably going to be the longest one of the series, mm. will kind of be like how Return of the King was like, Half of it was a book, and half of it was like, "Here's what happened to everyone after that." Like yeah. all the headaches. It's probably he's probably on so much stuff to tie up in the book of all the other characters he created that it was probably a little easier to go. You need to do this. You need to do this, and you need to end here. And if you do that, you'll relatively match the book enough that people won't freak out. That yeah. It's not the same. As long thing. as you make hit those major points. Pretty yeah. Much. And if he wanted to, you figure like, the way he can make the book different is first half of his book tells the story of the season and then he's got all this room to play with about, and then here's what happened to Westeros or whatever to make mm-hmm. give it more like oh okay if you feel like well I already watched the show I don't need to read this that's only the first half of the book and then yeah. I wrote all this like extra stuff that well we're... I'm sure this is not going to be the last we're going to hear from Game of Thrones after no, the season's done because no everyone wants to hear the, the story of like the fathers and the kings yeah, and stuff yeah. like that I mean there's so much material to go on with those things and then, um, just like what they're doing with the Lord of the Rings, because they're going to have their own sh- TV the show, Amazon, Amazon show. Prime. And I was worried about that, because they were like, well, it's going to be in the Lord of the Rings universe, but we're not going to show the story of Lord of the Rings. So mm-hmm. I thought, well, does that mean it's going to take place at the same time with a bunch of side characters? Well, there's been so many books. But now they've said from... it's going to take place in the second age, whereas like Lord of the Rings is the third age. And this is going to be like how... Soren came to yeah. power, and now I'm like 100% in. I'm like, okay, this is cool. Because what I wanted it to be was you could Don't watch... Don't give me something that I already know. Well, that and I, like, like I want something s- where you could watch the show and the movies and not feel like they're two completely separate things. Like the Yeah. Because it's not developed by the same people. But I still want it to like be able to coexist where you could watch them together and be like, this leads up to the movies that we already know. Because mm-hmm. like I don't, I don't want anyone to remake those movies for a very long time. You know, it's not something I want to see rebooted with a new cast. It was like people That's will compl- be hard. It would be really hard, and people that love the books complain about the things they change. But I'm like, it's close enough. This is the best you're gonna get. I mean, even still, like even the extended ones, Peter Jackson put so much into that, like that 
whole film is so beautiful. Yeah. Like, the way it was filmed and everything. But yeah, I seen like now that I rewatch them, like I could see like all the cheap CGI and shit. But like whatever, but that's, that's what they had. had at that's the time. what they had at the time. But I, it's still so yeah. good. But I wouldn't want it remade because I feel like it to stay true to the stay relatively true to the books, the movie would end up so much like the movies we already have. And then I feel like Hollywood would be like, well, we have to make something different than what we had before. And then they will change the story. I don't, I don't think they will be able to reboot that. That's yeah. just so it's much that they have Maybe to cover. Like and what they can do, years, they're going to put, like, in, yeah. put in that, that huge chapter of with the trees. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was the most boring chapter. Seriously. I was like, is this almost... Nope, I have like 20 more pages yeah. to go. But anyway, speaking of reboots... James Gunn's Suicide Squad is to be a total reboot. Yeah, I'm what do you think of this. that? So I'm glad. <laughs> I'm I'm in the small minority of people that enjoys the DC movies, <laughs> even though I know they could be so much better. And like when you compare them to Marvel, like I get all the criticism, but I've had this conversation a couple times in the last few days. I was over at Pop Comics the other night talking to the guy that works there about the same thing. But like just growing up with DC, it's just fun to see on the screen. Even if they don't get it right, because it's even though it's not as good as it could be, it's as good as except for the, like Dark Knight trilogy. But that that Dark Knight trilogy is Batman. It's not DC Universe on screen. Yeah. You know, it's like this is the closest we've gotten, and I'll take it. But <laughs> but then when they announce James Gunn, I'm like, oh, okay, now that's a game changer. That totally changes everything because he took an he took unknown these, comic. Well, yeah, he took an unknown comic with Guardians and made it into this huge thing and now if you like I, the Guardians comics are seeming to like take a lot of cues from the movies and like mm -hmm. let's use that version of the team and stuff like that and so I feel like he will come and do the same thing with Suicide Squad and we've seen a couple of versions of Suicide Squad now too because you have you have the movie you have the DC cartoons they've done and then you also like they had Suicide Squad on Arrow on the mm -hmm. show but I think he's going to come in and just completely reimagine the whole thing and then Idris Alba is also replacing Will Smith's Will Smith. character. Yeah. So I think this is going to be really cool. Right. And, so, uh, and I think it'll be a lot. I, feel I just like rewatched the too... first one a couple nights ago, and it's fine. Like, I don't hate it the way some people hate it. I just it. hate I, with the little, you know, their abilities part. It's like, what the heck? Yeah. It's, that was so cheesy. I'm like, it really? I'm all like, you could you could explain, like, a little short backstory to them, not give them, like, a card of, like, all oh, their Oh, yeah, abilities. the opening? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So. I feel like um, it just, some of it just felt really rushed, because if you look at, like, if you compare it to Avengers, we take all this time to make each movie about each person, and then mm -hmm. by the time we get to the Avengers movie, you already know them. Whereas they're like, we're just going to dive in. Here's this team. You don't totally know any of in. these people, so we're going to give you one minute to explain who they are. Yeah, and the villain was so, like, total letdown. Everything what That's she true. was trying to do with her weird little dance thing, and she was building something, but, like, that was the part nothing that, ever... That was the part on when I rewatched it. I'm like, this is where they really failed. She just said, oh, this... This world worships machines, so I'm going to make a machine. And I'm like, mm. but that whole time that you're making a machine, even though you're so powerful, you couldn't do nothing, it like quicker. Nothing, nothing happened. happened. Yeah. yeah, I feel like the better surprise would have been if they really convinced you, like if she was downstairs in the building that Amanda Waller was upstairs in, and they really convinced you that she wasn't there, and mm -hmm. you didn't know what they were trying to get to, and they had yeah. to get through the villain to get to her. That would have been better. But they did that halfway through the movie. Yeah. You know, they made it show, made it seem like Waller's kind of like calling the shots from some offsite, Sorry. and she turns out to be the thing they were trying to get. Yeah. And then halfway through the movie, they give you that. I'm like, well, that was the ending. The the ending they needed was after they defeat the Enchantress, they go up to see like what was the thing we were trying to get to, and it was Amanda Waller the whole time. That would have been more interesting than the end. They had no reason. They didn't convince me that those that group of villains would say like, all right, well we're free, we can leave now. But then, let's like, go let's, do, let's do this for, like, let's, Just cause, let's save the world because of love or something. Now. Yeah, yeah. Did, that part, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't That's not it. convincing. It wasn't convincing Especially, at all. like, a lot of them are so sick and demented in their own there minds. There should have been more stakes, like, you know, they could have found a way with, like, with Will Smith's character, especially, like, the Enchantress would have done something that would have put his daughter at risk, right? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then he had a reason, right? But they didn't. They didn't give you that. They, didn't they just catch kind of just that. went, oh well, because Rick Flag freed them all. He tur turned off the bomb, and then they were like, and had all a, right. a shot with them. Yeah, and then they're like, we're gonna do it anyways. And let me give you these letters from your daughter all the yeah. time, and we're cool now. Yeah. 
It's like, no, it's like, let's like give them like a reason, like, hey, if Enchantress does this shit, she's gonna rule the world. Yeah. She's gonna kill all the people that she loves or something like that. Or just like have them something like to give them for each of them the, a reason a why. A reason to, to stay on, yeah. yeah. That part didn't have it, have it at all. So. And like with Shazam coming and like James Gunn directing Guardians, do you think they're gonna go through towards that way of the kind of film, like a little bit like. Um, you know, here and there, jokes and lightheartedness. I think so. Yeah. I think I think it's going to be the same kind of formula because he's been successful with it twice now, mm-hmm. and he knows what works, and he also knows that people are going to come see this movie, whether they like the first one or not. For him, like, that's the draw. Yeah. The draw for the Suicide Squad is that it's James Gunn. Like, people will go back for Guardians because they like Guardians, but they'll come see Suicide Squad because they liked what he did with Guardians. But then now James Gunn is back. Directing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. See, I I kind of, uh, I think, I I like the idea that that now Marvel and DC can share directors because DC will get better. It felt like there's like a line, like, no, this is my director, that's your director. Yeah, you do one or the other. And now, like, this sets the precedent that you can go, you can can do a couple Marvel movies and be like, but I, you know, because if you're a director that likes comics and you want to adapt comics, you you probably want to do both. And also... On the one hand, it's like you could be a Marvel guy and go do a DC guy or do do a DC movie, and it doesn't mean you have burned your bridge with Marvel. Like yeah. you can't go back, and that's what I think. Probably some of them were thinking like, "Well, I already have this deal with Marvel, and I don't want to risk this deal." I'd re- like, like let's say I'm. Well, he's probably was tied in. Yeah. With Marvel, like these are the movies that I have to do. I can't work on anything else because yeah. he wasn't really working on anything. No, because like, and I'll just pick one at random. But like, if you're like, oh, I made Doctor Strange, and I'm already signed on for Doctor Strange too. But I have all this downtime between two and when they would probably do three. I sure would like to make a DC movie. Now I think they know like you can't go ahead and do that because well he got he was fired, so he went and they like right. hell yeah we want but James they still Gunn. brought him back so yeah. it's like well it's there's, no, there's like, no way they can really they've set that precedent that they can't tell their directors like if you were gonna work with Marvel then you can't make a DC movie you uh, know because they'll be like well James Gunn did so. yeah but it's like. It's funny how, like, you know that meme that I posted with the yeah. Peter Parker? <laughs> it was like, you're fired. No way, I need you. Come back. You're yeah. unhired. <laughs> Pretty much that's what they did to them. And I feel like there was, there's no other director like James Gunn that could capture the same emotions for the set base of Guardians of the Galaxy. Plus, you had some of the actors were not happy. That didn't want to come back, too. Yeah. But I think they covered themselves, too, in the way they handle it because they said, like, essentially it's like, because of what he posted and we're Disney, we had to fire him, but we're going to bring him back because of the way he handled it. Because he did handle it with grace. He didn't mm. go badmouth them, which most directors would have done. They would have been like, well, you know, like, um, so many people that have said they won't even work with Marvel anymore. Yeah. Because, uh, like, what's um, Red Skull, um, Hugo Weaving, like, uh-huh. he's like, I'm never going to come back. I didn't enjoy that process at all, you know? It was just like, what? Too and much like, people on um, hand on it? I don't remember what his problem was, but he didn't want to come back for even, like, the cameo in Avengers. Like, he didn't want to do Red Skull. He didn't want to reprise his role. And then you hear people like that, and it's like, kind of like, you know, maybe don't burn your bridge. Like, even if you didn't enjoy it, you don't have to go tell the press. Just, like, because yeah. a lot of times you, he's, like, kinda, like, you let down, the like, royalty like, of, like, sci-fi. <laughs> yeah, and, like, you, I feel like, on, on in some respects, you kind of let down... Some of the fans, like, I don't care, but little kids, like, they don't want to hear that, like, working for Marvel sucks. You know what I mean? Or, um, oh, who was it? Somebody else. Uh, well, I think um, Joss Whedon was upset after the second Avengers because they made him plug in a lot of other stuff into it. Like that scene with Thor in the cave. I don't think he wanted that in the movie. So it was pretty much a lot of, like, CEOs and people or, like, just put, the trying Marvel, to well, change the, the their... The Marvel, like, the group that figures out how all the movies are going to connect make you put stuff into your movie not not even in a, like a post credit scene because like if you watch uh, Age of Ultron that that scene with Thor in the cave doesn't really fit no, it's it supposed doesn't. to set it's up like, the rest but they, they made him like here insert this into your movie and, and but a lot it was of them so like, random and like what did movie. it help for anyone else it just showed like okay Asgard is gonna go down right but when it did go down, it was totally opposite from that original right? vision. And, and the thing you can compare it to in DC is when they inserted that scene when Batman has the dream, the nightmare about the future, and now they're not even going to do that. They're not, yeah. you know, so like 
you go back and watch that movie, like whether you like Justice League or not, that part will always stand out as something that had nothing to do with anything. Mm -hmm. You know? But to see them all dead is like, oh my god. Yeah, because it was supposed to be, originally Justice League was going to be a two-parter, and Darkseid was going to be in the second half, and then they decided, now we're just going to make one part, but they left that whole nightmare sequence in, and it doesn't tie to anything. Maybe, yeah. And now that they don't really want to do crossover films for a while, they're never going to pay that off. So it's almost like th that movie already struggled, and now years later when you look back it's going to be i think it's going to be even worse because when they have like now that they're getting on track with with um shazam and aquaman and wonder woman that people have liked and you're going to go back and look at the justice league movie go it's even worse because they set up stuff that never paid off they never revisited any of that stuff it was that movie was totally too rushed it was just a mess like there were parts of it that i really liked there were there were things as a dc fan i enjoyed seeing on screen but like the but, climatic scenes is yeah. like Really, that's total letdown. It's, and it's just like messy. you just threw in something random in there, and like, oh, you're gonna come watch it anyway, so who cares? Like, yeah. if we, you know, do put this weak ass scene in it. Well, it's almost like they got so far into the movie before they realized how upset people were with Batman v Superman, and then it's like, well, we need to make some changes, but we've already started this movie. I feel like they almost should have just said. I mean, they could have the, like stopped bite the it bullet and re that, that like start over or bite the bullet and finish your vision. Yeah. And then go, okay, we'll change course next time. But you don't change midway through a movie. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, who cares if it's going to, if you're going to push back the dates of the movies? Do it right. Do it right. You know? And not give us some, like, half ass shit. Yeah. But, you know. I think they're learning from their mistakes now. I think now, so, too. So. But, I can't um, wait for Shazam. I think that's going to be so fun. But, um, uh, Patrick, I know that you're a huge Pokemon fan. Yes. And Detective Pikachu is going to be coming out I can't soon. Wait. Oh my god, I can't wait. Right? But they're going to also going to be making a comic book adaptation of the movie. Ah, so, let me what see. Do you think? Two of my favorite things Pokemon and comic books coming together. <laughs> and it's going to be a full length novel. That's going to be that's going to be very cool. I think there's a lot <coughs> a lot more they can do with this universe than just just what they've been doing with right. mostly mostly games. Now to see it get, and the TV show obviously, and like they did movies based on the show, but to see this kind of film that I think people were skeptical of till they saw the preview, well, and they're yeah, like, oh my god, this is going to be so much fun. You don't even have to know about Pokemon. You just like, I mean, obviously the big selling point is <laughs> Ryan Reynolds being Ryan Reynolds, you know? Yeah. He just happens to be voicing a Pikachu. And honestly... I was a little turned off at first when they're like, oh, Pikachu talks? I'm like, ugh. Well, because with that movie that came out and he when speaks he, for the first time, we're all like, so what jarring. the fuck? Yeah. But then when I saw the trailer and saw how they're approaching it, where he's kind of like, wait, you can hear me? I'm like, okay. It just like, that, that voice of Ryan Reynolds that one is one little like, thing is all it took to be like, and then when other people only hear him say, Pika, Pika. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was brilliant. It was just amazing. And like, I wonder how many, like, people that they had to go through to be to do Pikachu's voice yeah. until they finally like you know what let's just go let's with just Ryan go with Reynolds. Reynolds somebody that can he's be funny he's amazing with yeah. Deadpool and he's like always on top of his and game that, with lines and that and like you look at how he promoted Deadpool so you know he'll go do the same thing he'll be all over promotion for this movie when it comes out it's so like, hilarious how you pick he's like yeah I'm gonna do the voice of Pikachu yeah. and like hearing about it, like Ryan Reynolds is gonna be Pikachu it was kind of like I don't know but then when he finally saw the trailer, it was like... That was the payoff. I Yeah, I'm going to go see it. And that was another it was another franchise where it's like, oh, they're making a Detective Pikachu and I, movie. And I was like, and Pikachu talks. And my reaction was like, I don't know how I feel about that, but I know that I'm going to end up seeing it either way. So I hope it's good, because otherwise I'm going to waste my time, you know. And then, because I, I have the game, and I know he talks in the game and in the, the story that it's based on, but I still hadn't played the game. I never got around to it. But to see how they're going to pull it off, I was like, oh, man, I'm not, I'm not just in. I can't wait. It's my second most anticipated movie after Here Avengers. he jumped in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Patrick, have you read any comic books this week? I uh, <laughs> started a comic. <laughs> so I started reading a comic called Jesus Freak and didn't realize that I would not be able to finish it before we started recording because it's a lot longer than I thought it was. But it's, I like, I'm, I'm, it's not one of those things where I'm like, well, I started it and then we recorded it, so I'm done. I'm gonna as soon as we're done, I'm gonna finish reading it because it was it was interesting. I like the uh, approach they took with it. There's like a big disclaimer at the beginning that like if you're looking for 
anything religious or you're looking for answers, do not look here. It's just like, go read the Bible, go read the so Torah, you know. <laughs> go read the Quran, go to church, go meditate. This book is just like, this is a work of fiction and we hope you like enjoy the ride. And as I'm getting into it, it's, you have like two things going on. You, it's showing, it kind of reminded me of Dogma. You remember the scene <laughs> where, where I think it was, I think it was the angel is telling them like, okay, so you know the story of Jesus like when he was born, mm -hmm. and you know the story of Jesus when he was like in his 30s and worked miracles and all this stuff, but Me nobody the talks about sudden, what happens in the middle. So this one talks and about that, it opens with him and like. You think of like the story of Jesus, and you go, "Oh, he was a carpenter." But let's think about that. What that meant in that time? He was basically like he wasn't like it putting was not more glamorous wood on carpentry. He wasn't making like like hipster chairs, right. you know? He building was building homes. these homes, yeah, and like they were like homes for I think like the Roman Empire, which was enslaving them all, you know. So he doesn't have a glamorous life at all, and he's having dreams that are kind of visions and. But, but they're not like, they're not happy visions of like, this is how heaven is. It's like he's having visions that he thinks are are of hell and just people being tortured and stuff. And he's just miserable. And it also cuts to, so this is before he's like, has disciples or has anyone following him. He's not teaching anything. He's just, he's just a guy who makes buildings and he's very unhappy. He's just a regular Joe. Yeah. And... Uh, he cuts to Pontius Pilate arriving and he talks about how there's all these false messiahs and that they're all going to burn in hell. And I think, I think that's where this story is going, where Jesus learns who he may be or he might be crazy, right? He could just be a guy that's having crazy visions. Yeah. And this, the idea of Pilate being a guy who feels like there's all these people pretending to be prophets and that they all need to pay. And that I don't know that it will ever, I don't think it will ever make a statement about whether, because I'm not even, a, I'm not a religious person. And that's why I think I'm going to enjoy this. I don't think it's ever going to flat out say, oh, he was the Messiah or he was crazy. It will yeah. kind of be left open that there's, this is just a dude that's it's having like pretty vision, much, so, well, you know what happens in the future. Right. You know? And so like from Pilate's point of view, this is a guy that, a crazy guy that thinks he's the son of God. And from Jesus' point of view, he's just confused right now. And as like he finds out stuff, I don't think the story will make a determination of what you're supposed to believe. Mm -hmm. And you could look at it from both person's point of view. And so the last part I left off is like he met a lizard who t who said like, you're looking for answers, you'll find the answers within. And the lizard never said who he was. And the book doesn't tell you who the lizard is. It's just, hey, a talking lizard. So he yeah. could totally be crazy. And so I'm, I'm interested. He's I wanna... like, oh shit, I should stop eating those shrooms. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I'm, I'm in. I think it's very cool. Right. It's uh, called Jesus Freak, and this one... It's an image comic, It's right? image, exactly. I was like, oh, let me think. And it's by uh, Joe Casey, Benjamin Mara. And the art's cool. kind of reminds me of, like, it doesn't look like the superhero comics of today that are, like, giant splash pages and stuff. It looks like yeah. the stuff that I grew up on. You know, it's not... It's, it's I don't know, it kind of feels like a throwback to... Mm -hmm. it's the comics I first got into when I was young, but it's the story is and like they didn't make him look like the traditional pictures of Jesus. He just looks like a, a dude, you know. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, yeah. Have yeah. you read any others? Because I know you pick up DC comics. Uh, here and there. Oof. Uh, I'm like neck deep in all the DC stuff right now, especially Doomsday Clock and uh, yes. uh, Heroes in Crisis. So um, just waiting for that to wrap up and see what effect it has on the, the full DC universe. Mm -hmm. um, super into those two books. I feel like a lot of people are enjoying uh, Doomsday Clock, and for whatever reason, people have their complaints about Heroes in Crisis, but I think it's a really good mystery, because I'm like hooked on it, and I want to know where it's going to go, and I don't feel like they've revealed... I feel like it could go so many different ways that I'm not going to be able to guess the ending. Yeah. So, cool. Besides that, just like everything else DC... Especially in like how it ties into all of this stuff. Nice. So I'll and I, I did start buying some Marvel stuff, but I haven't read any of it yet. So <laughs> we'll save that for a future podcast. <laughs> all right. So opposite from what you read, like the Jesus Freak, I read, I picked up the IDW 
bezeled bubs. Oh, I saw it's that one. It's by J.P. Ahonen, and it's pretty much it's making fun of... The story of the devil? Like, <laughs> pretty much. No, but it's like people who are really into death metal and stuff. So it goes through to... It's like pretty much just like little interviews with like each musician from this band. Right. And about their life. And they all have like the white and black makeup. Right, right. <laughs> so like mortal status. <laughs> and it's pretty hilarious because they're all like trying to find like uh, like their new drummer. And they're like... I don't like how he does his makeup and stuff. And, <laughs> and he's like, I like when I was like, I it's hard to keep up this look. And he's like a little chubby, and he like his makeup. So he puts on his face. He walks out of the bathroom, and he looks at himself, and he puts like two little eyes on his nipples and a little face <laughs> to make him look more metal. And then another the one's all like putting added spikes onto uh, his outfit, his jacket, and they're like, no, we need more. We need more. So he's all covered in spikes. Oh, my God. So just like that, and then they're like, some of them have their own little family, so the little boy's like, he's like, there's a creepy person on the window, and I can't sleep. And, like, he's like, oh, like, the moms are like, oh, you're fine. Like, there's no one there on your window. And the father goes out, and it's like some, like, it was like a Jesus guy in the window trying to save his son, and he goes out there with a badge like, "Get out of here!" <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much, like, it's all like random little issues for like, it's just funny for like someone who's like a death metal family, and yeah. they like the 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 wife and the father wear the white and black makeup. Oh my god! It's just hilarious. Yeah, I gotta like, check it out. Yeah, it's hilarious. I mean, I used to be like into like I love like I still listen to some death metal but I don't dress the part yeah. anymore not since high school I grew up all that shit yeah. so they just read it that it's just pretty funny because you think like oh you're gonna be like this person forever like into death metal you're gonna wear the same shit like I don't wear any of the clothes like I used to before with like three belt the ring like you know metal bell with the studs yep. and everything and then all these bracelets and the hair and like no I don't do that anymore I was completely I was completely like a weirdo in high school but anyways oh this, man I wore this book is hilarious I wore I didn't wear like makeup or anything but I was like black jeans and uh, black either Guns N' Roses or Metallica shirt every day yeah. every day I had enough to, to rotate through occasionally I might have like rotated in a Skid Row shirt mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was pretty And much... now you moved on into comic book <laughs> shirts. Yeah. Black shirt, but my, I wore blue jeans now. I don't have to wear black from head to toe. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I wore. I mean, I wore that every day. I had so many Guns N' Roses shirts that I could literally, like the Monday one, the Tuesday one. <laughs> yeah. Dude, like one time I was in Hollywood. At, I was there at the Whiskey. I was watching some band, but I walked out and there's like another little bar right next to the Whiskey, Whiskey Go-Go. Uh, place it was like a tiny little hole in the wall bar like right next to it's like closet space and I walked out with my Guns N' Roses shirt and the security guard is all like hey um you should come back tomorrow I'm all like why well Izzy Stradlin's here and he wants you to come to his birthday I'm all no! like what that's so awesome I was like yeah sure but it's like that was when I barely had a car I was like yeah sure I'll come but like I never went I was oh, like <laughs> you know what's funny is like in high school, it was black jeans, black shoes, black socks, black t-shirt every day. And then when grunge happened, I didn't change to wearing grunge, but then you just added the flannel shirt to the already black. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> like, I'm like, no, I'm not going to change, but I will accessorize. Mine was, so I had like the, yeah. I had, I remember I had the yellow and red Guns N' Roses User Illusion 1 shirt. And then I also had the blue and purple User Illusion 2 shirt. Mm-hmm. And then I had a matching flannel, like a yellow flannel or a blue flannel. <laughs> Yeah. But then the rest of the time, it was just black Metallica shirt. Uh, Mine was, like, in the era of, like, punk was being reborn. Yeah. And then you had the emo era. Yeah. And then, like, you had well, the, the metal kids. Well, and but the then, emo kids were, were all black, but then their belt was white. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, that time we didn't have skinny jeans, so we had right. to use, like, our mom's sewing machines to make to our own up. skinny <laughs> jeans. <laughs> Yep. We didn't have the luxury of going in the store and getting skinny jeans. We had to go make our own skinny jeans because everything was just boot cut and overalls. <laughs> and then, like, a few years after the metal stuff is, like, when me and my friends, look, like, discovered all the local punk bands. And at that time, everybody was wearing clothes that were too big. 
<laughs> instead of skinny jeans, you had like you go to the thrift store and buy like a pair of slacks that were size fifty. <laughs> you know, it was like, like was it like those pants? Was it like the bugle wear or something? I forget yeah, what they were called. Just, it was like, something you like just that. Whatever you they could covered find your or, like, shoes over. Yeah, yeah, shirts that looked like you worked at a gas station, but then bands would like silk screen their logo on it or something. So it's yeah, just... and for some reason you would have like um, suspenders hanging out. Yeah, I didn't wear those, but there were a lot of people that did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like you'd like, wear them, but you wouldn't put them on. Yeah, you'd, you'd, put, like, them, you'd put them on the <laughs> pants, and then they just hang. I'm like, well, that defeats the purpose. Yeah, but um, I also read the Hit Girl season two issue How's that? two with Kevin Smith. Finally, this comic book has some words in it. Not like the first one where it was just like silent. Issue. Silent, yeah. But pretty much, Mindy's arrived to Hollywood, and she goes on the tour, kind of like the WB the like WB tour, tour. Yeah. yeah, and like um, she sees. They go on set and give her a, a scene. They let the tour see a scene where Big Daddy gets shot. So, like, even though that's not how he died, but she's, like, reliving. Reliving it, right. Like, her father dying, and she's, like, kind of, like, you know, just all these emotions coming up. And then, like, Hick, the, the girl, the actress is playing Hick girl, she's like, oh, hey, blah, blah, blah. He's like, you know any badass girls? He's like, I can name more <laughs> than you. And she's, like, pissed. So, like, she's all, like, she's kind of, like, seeing what's going on. Who are these people that are playing these characters? I'm trying to get more info, but nothing really happens. But she sees, like, they say in the tour, like, there, there's this big uh, black building. Pretty much all the exec CEOs, that's where the magic happens, pretty much where everything starts. So it goes into a scene where a secretary is bringing a fresh, fresh, fresh-faced actress to the CEO or executive. And pretty much, he's like, okay, you can leave us alone. I can take it from here. And the secretary's like, I'm not worried about you. I'm more worried about her. And the guy takes off his pants and try and take advantage of this girl. Pretty much Kevin Smith is showing what, what's what been happening with Hollywood with yeah. these actresses and, like, you know, He's being taking forward. shots at Harvey Weinstein. Yes. Yeah. So it's really crazy. So, um, That's awesome. Hit Girl comes in sees what's happening and you know towards the end he like kills him but she is not hit girl she's somebody else and then mindy just says hit girl no it's like later at night okay mindy finally comes in it's about to kill the executive but he's already dead cops find her in that situation and she just jumps out of the window and leaves so somebody's impersonating her now and that's how it leads off. Huh. It reminds me. It also that also reminds me of Dogma. <laughs> <laughs> the scene with yeah. the execs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kevin but Smith borrowing from himself. <laughs> I just love it that Kevin Smith is referencing his movies into this yeah. uh, comic that's book series. Cool. So it's pretty cool. It's just a mini four issue series. So I'm just happy that because Kevin Smith now he's busy. He's doing that yeah. reboot with Jane and the Bob Strike yeah. Back. And now he's he's, he's got written so that comic. many things going on. It I'm makes so me feel so lazy when I look at how much stuff he gets done. I mean, you know, I'm sure it's different when you have you have money and you you can hire assistants and stuff. Mm-hmm. You, sure, I could get so much done if I didn't have to go to work and I had assistants to do all this other stuff for me. But man, it does. Some days it just makes me feel like, what am I doing? Like he yeah. can get 300 things done every year and I get barely make it to work. I just love it. He's such a like pothead, and he still does he's all still, this. Shit. Yeah, like you know how like uh, what's his name, uh, Zeth Rogan? He's like a working um, like pothead. Yeah, <laughs> he can still get shit done. Yeah, that's crazy. Because right? most of the stoners I know can't even get out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. But this is like a good little series. I mean, I'm a huge like Kevin Smith fan, and so are you. Same. I mean, we go to stand up and all that stuff, and hear his awesome stories. But, like, it was a pretty good issue. And I like how he's just doing, like, a story that's close to his films. Yeah, And, like, you see it. Like, the references is all there. But he cannot not like Kevin Smith. So I had to pick this up. (laughs) And then I also read um, Marvel Action Avengers issue 3 with IDW. Oh, I read that too. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. I'm like, oh, cool, a Marvel comic. Because, like, I know... IDW got the rights to a lot of Marvel properties mm-hmm. because they 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 know how to market to kids. Yeah. 
and I've I read some of the stuff they did with like the Star Wars adventures. So I, when Those I saw that they were too. doing Marvel, I'm like like the Marvel main line. I'm like, oh, this is cool. So I, right. I read that. That was very cool. Cause yeah. It's actually like whether it's aimed at kids or not, it's really good for someone like me that doesn't know all the Marvel like years and years of lore. Like I get like who each of the characters are, mostly from the movies, but also I read some Marvel when I was young. But then this one is giving just new jump villain in. characters. Yeah, that... new characters, but also you don't need to know a million things. It's yeah, like, like just check back on the last two issues and you totally be caught up. Mm-hmm. So So pretty much it's like Agents of Shield are yeah. putting like away these villains, but like they run into Madame Mask, and like she breaks free and a couple of villains. So it's like, what the heck? So Agent Shields is down right now, and the co- of course the cover like fools you. It's like yeah. the Avengers are not there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. It was by uh, Matthew K. Manning, and it's like introducing the Iron Mechanic. Right. Which is like going to be like a part three or something. Yeah. So. Yeah, I liked it. I liked it. I, w- I want to check out the other issues. and It's cool because it's a good entry point where you don't have to know anything going into yeah. it. You can go like, well, I have a I have a somewhat understanding of the Marvel Universe, but I'm not going to get it's really, 10 pages in and it's like, oh, go back and read this Marvel comic from 20 years ago to yeah. understand any of this. It's literally for adults, but also mainly pointed for kids. Yeah. But like for kids, you know, kids don't really read the bubbles. They just look at the action and right. it's pretty much drawn to where you could figure out what's, what's happening. Going on. Yeah. So. And I think those really important to have comics that even if they're not completely geared toward kids like appeal to kids so that we have a new generation that get into this stuff otherwise you know eventually it will go away they'll yeah. cut to a point that it's just like it's just us reading it and then we'll get too old and <laughs> you know, I was like here's my uh, comic book collection you guys get yeah, to yeah they need to have a way to pass it on to the next generation yeah. so that they're still interested but yeah but those are all like pretty much the comics I've read this week um, very cool so we covered pretty much everything, everything. down. Avengers to Game of Thrones to uh, Lord of the Rings. Walking Dead. The Walking <laughs> everything. Dead, everything. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. And thank you, Patrick, for coming oh, and sitting. My pleasure. And Anytime. Enjoying a beer with me. And then we're going to eat some of these uh, nacho pulled pork fries. Pulled pork fries. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So see you guys next time. Later. Bye.